Good afternoon. How you doing folks? So, first things first, apologies. There was no video last week for a variety of reasons. The main one being that I had COVID the week before. Uh, second one uh, being I cocked up a bit with um, ND filters and leaving the camera in the wrong settings the next time I went out. So that was the day that I went to Bomber Command. However, in this video, I will put some footage up from uh, my visit to Bomber Command because I, I didn't just uh, film me getting there and getting back, which I did, but was, it was uh, overexposed thanks to using ND filters. I am using ND filters again today and I'm going to talk a bit about that later on. So let's roll that intro and then we'll get into it. Until it's getting warmer, the bugs are out. Just got one straight on my sun visor on my helmet. <laughs> oh well. Expect more. So, ND filters then, what are they all about? Well, I did mention them in my previous video talking about ND filters, um, and unfortunately, in my ignorance, I didn't know that much about them. Since that video, I've done a lot of looking into ND filters and learning how to use them with a GoPro uh, and to get the best out of them. So I'm using, I, I don't know whether I said it in the last video, I think I did. Uh, when am I ever going to use an ND, I think this is a 32, when am I ever going to use that? It's on now. What does it look like? It looks alright, doesn't it? So what I'll do is we'll have a bit of a chat about that in a wee while uh, and I'll go through what I've learned about ND filters uh, and I'll also post the settings that I use in the description box below so if you're interested in using ND filters you can just uh, buy yourself some put in these settings that I put below these are all for this specific camera though so um, well, I mean, you can use them on the GoPro 9, you can use them on the GoPro 10, which is what this one is. For a GoPro Hero 7, um, I'll put up some other settings. The only reason I'm not going to use it on this one anymore is simply because, with it being fixed to the bar, the vibration actually cocks up what I'm trying to achieve with it. So I'm trying to achieve a bit of motion blur that gets dragged through uh, still images and also it just it just softens what you see it's like these hedgerows rushing past now if if a camera is in normal settings not set up for ND filters you would just see um, a series of sort of static images of the of the hedgerows which is what which is what the way that GoPros work um, it shoots a series of static images that go by so quickly um, you can't tell that they're static I'm sure you already know that that's how films work that's how they always have worked if you if you alter the settings and slow it down slow everything down slightly it adds a blur it adds a really nice blur to those images and this is what I'm trying to achieve using this Thank you.
So the car parking is three pounds, which is nothing really. And then if you just want to come in and do the garden and the cafe, I think that's free if you're in a car. Um, it's completely free if you're on a bike. There's no, there's no charge for parking uh, on a bike. The only downside is the fact that there's nowhere to store your helmet. It's not a difficult place to get to. Um, not for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> don't know about you but there's main main road routes here um, I came straight up the A46 from home uh, Lincoln's always a bit congested so give yourself time to get here um, there's a big cafe here uh, unfortunately today they've only got um, cash payment because there's something wrong with their telephone system so they can't accept anything by card fortunately I'd got 10 quid left in my wallet paid for the exhibition um, but you will get a, a, a guided tour with that as well. I'm not sure whether you, whether you have to pay for the guided tour if, you, if you're if you not paying to do the exhibition. Um, but no, it's a nice place. I do like it. Um, and it's about time I came to visit it because it's, it's very local to me. Lincoln Cathedral is just over there. And about 10 minutes ago, the red arrows flew over in formation. I mean... What's not to love? <laughs> um. So that's me about done then, folks. Um, I think I've seen everything that there is to see here. Uh, it's been it's been really enjoyable. I've enjoyed it for a day out. Well, morning. It's it's only taken a morning, really. Um, you could spend you could spend plenty of time here. The garden's lovely, um, and the the monument itself over there. It, it's it's a dramatic piece of architecture, really. Thick steel it's made out of. Um, I didn't bother going on the tour. You can go on a like a guided tour. I'm not sure whether you have to pay for the guided tour. It costs nine quid to do the exhibition um, and once you've paid that you can definitely do the tour um, and the tours are going pretty much all the time there's quite a few volunteers here doing the tours I'm sure they're really interesting I just couldn't be bothered this morning to be honest I just wanted to come do a bit of filming you know I've got all my bike gear to lug around with me I just couldn't be bothered because that's that's the thing like I said earlier there's nowhere to actually put your stuff uh, which is a bit of a downside really um, but yeah, it was enjoyable. And I don't begrudge paying nine quid for an exhibition that doesn't really contain that much. Um, if it helps Bomber Command keep this place going and you know it funds them, then I really don't I, I really don't mind paying that nine quid. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna find a route home, an interesting route home, because I did a boring trip up and the weather's glorious now, so I'm gonna uh, find a nice route home and set off and do that. So what we'll do, we'll just head up to my favourite little spot. Oh, the other issue I had as well was with microphones. So I'm hoping this one is working okay today. Um, so the issue I had, I, I uh, th this microphone is really good little bastard this microphone is really good um, so this is the Rode Go microphone the only problem is uh, it's a little bit too sensitive if anything um, and it does pick up a lot of other sound you know wind noise that sort of thing uh, and I can't get rid of it 
so I tried a unidirectional microphone rather than an omnidirectional one that picks up all sorts of uh, ambient sound as well. Uh, I tried using one that only picks up voice, but oh man, didn't work, didn't work. So that was a waste of 20 quid. So I've got one more to try that is used by another motor vlogger. Um, I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to use it. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to buy it, and then I'm going to start using it. Um, and I want you to let me know whether you can tell the difference or not. So here, I'm going to show you what I mean about um, about filters. And it's like I say, I am no expert. I've, I've had to um, read up about this subject and find out the best way to use them with this setup. So you can try with your camera. It's like I say, I will put you a setup that I think might work. Excuse me, for that Hero 7. So this is my little, you've seen these before, my little pack of Telesyn lenses. So ND8, ND16, ND32. So what does it look like? This is what it looks like with the ND filter on. That's what it looks like without the ND filter on. I've just got my bloody finger right in that sod in hell. So that's that's how bright it is. It, everything's overblown. You can't see any you know you don't you don't get a proper picture and this is what happened when i went out on um, the day that i went to bomber command and i didn't realize until i got back that i hadn't changed the settings from experimenting with nd filters before so with these settings then the idea is that when it comes to choosing which one you want to use the idea is that you then get your lenses to match it for the brightness of the day so when i checked earlier is i i can't check now without taking this off the helmet and you know holding it in my hand while i show while i offer up these uh, i'm not going to be able to tell what it looks like but i'll show you so overblown now so that's with the nd8 i think that's probably still too bright nd16 when I checked this at home, I thought this was approaching something that I could use, but I, I still think that some of the whites are a little bit blown out on that, which is why I ended up going with this, the ND32. So when you pop this on, See what I mean? This is what I said in the last video. You have to be really careful that you make it fit all the way around because they're just push-on ones. These um, they're not ones that go on in place of the lens protector. They're just press-on ones. They're pretty cheap. Uh, I put the price up in the last video. I'll put the price up again for these. So I, I'm pretty certain you'll agree that this is by far and away the best ND filter for today uh, with these settings that I've got in the camera at the moment. So the good thing about this camera is you can now, uh, with the GoPro 10, I don't know whether you can do it on the 9, but with the 10, uh, it's got presets on it, so you can uh, put in a series of presets. So I've just added this to my presets. Um, so if I'm on a day like today where it's lovely and bright, because you really you're not going to be using ND filters on dull days. So on days that are a bit changeable, you could go down to the ND16 or the ND8 filter. Um, but really on a day like today, it's, it's so bright today that uh, I'm just better off with the ND32. So I'll head off, do a bit more. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that sort of shows you what ND filters actually do when your camera's set up properly. If your camera's not set up properly, you're not going to get the actual effect that you're chasing. And it was Jake at uh, JBL who, uh, who gave me that information that I, I wasn't using it correctly. So thanks for that, Jake. Very much appreciated. And I now consider myself, well, not, not perfectly educated, 
Um, I am just a, an average Joe. I'm not. I'm not a photographer. I'm not a professional photographer. I'm not a professional filmmaker. I just do this just to keep me out of trouble, <laughs> and still manage to get into trouble. So, yeah. Thanks for that, Jake, for pointing me in the right direction. Very much appreciated. It's a glorious day. Oh, look at that. The oil seed rape is starting to appear. Look at that old Triumph Herald. Is it a Herald? Vitesse. It's a Vitesse, isn't it? So yeah, I will, in this video, uh, I will be including bits of footage from the last few videos that I've been trying to make. So we'll have a bit from Bomber Command, a bit from uh, the mistakes that I made using ND filters while I was out experimenting with them. I say they were mistakes, they're not really mistakes, it's, part, it's all part of the learning curve. So um, mistakes probably the wrong phrase for that. You gotta learn. So I've also swapped the settings on this camera. So I used to work uh, with that camera at uh, minus 0 0.5 on the exposure compensation. Um, simply because I think that it, around me now, so I've got it set at plus uh, 0 0.5 at the moment. So I'm just hoping that is not too bright, but the, the problem that I was having with it was that um, I was appearing too dark in the image. But just what I was seeing while I was editing, I just thought my image is too dark a lot of the time. So I've, I've adjusted that. I may be completely wrong with it. I may have to adjust it a little bit more. I probably, ju I might just end up setting it at zero on that one. Uh, in other news, the 360. It's having yet another holiday in Hong Kong. This is holiday number three for the scratch lens when I dropped it outside the cathedral. So I bought a couple of lens protectors. Um, <laughs> the problem is they are going to arrive, I think, way after the time that I get 360 back. So uh, I'll probably have damaged it again by then. I'm going to I'm going to try really bloody hard not to knacker it up this time. And I think uh, in that spring video that I put up, spring dingaling. I think uh, some of the footage from that was um, approaching an acceptable level. Sort of learning more how to edit with uh, the 360. Getting the footage is never an issue, is it? I mean, you could anybody can strap one of those cameras to their bike and go out and shoot some footage. But it's how you edit with it and then it's how you process that edit. Um, the thing that I really, really dislike about it is the fact that I have to do all of the editing outside of Final Cut Pro. It's just an absolute pain in my ass. So all I do is edit those uh, videos, um, the 360 footage, the bits that I want to use, and then I, I try and slot them in. So they don't always match the timeline. That's the issue that I have with it. So some of it gets chopped backwards and forwards a bit. I know, giving all my secrets away now. But that's uh, that's video making, I'm afraid. To get a nice visual effect, you have to uh, chop it about a bit. So yeah, like I say, I'm sorry I, there was no video last week. I, I do find it quite difficult to, uh, to produce a video. Because, uh, well, one of the things that I struggle with as much as anything is um, having content to put in it. I could go out and just have a ride out, but it's not very meaningful, is it? It's not very informative. There are other things that I'm, I want to go out and film, but uh, at the moment I've got a bit of a bit of a stressful situation going on. But I don't want to talk about that. Is um, it's slowing the whole creative process to a point where it sort of 
come to a standstill. So trying to um, trying to get anything done at the moment is being a bit of a challenge for me. So, so I swapped the filter. You're now on the ND16 filter simply because these clouds have bubbled up a bit and every so often we'll get a cloud come over. So uh, I'm just seeing what this ND16 looks like, hopefully under a bit of cloud cover. Bouncing over a bump caused that. So I went out, uh, I think it was before I got COVID, I went out, and my confidence was just all over the place. riding like a complete going into corners and sort of panicking at the approach to a corner as you enter in the corner I, don't, I really don't know what the hell I was doing that day but uh, I just decided to back it right off and dawdle along and yet on the same roads the week earlier I was absolutely batting along there I don't know, it's, it's fragile isn't it? Confidence on a motorbike is um, quite a fragile thing. So that's me done then folks. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the Bomber Command footage. I hope I've enlightened you a little bit with uh, the use of ND filters and uh, let me know how you get on. If any of you sort of try using ND filters let me know how you get on. Uh, and like I say I will see you on the next one. Cheers for now guys.